All right, this is a presentation on a rope data structure. I got interested in this maybe two months ago. I wanted to make a text editor, and I had read that you know all of the good text editors use ropes, and yet everyone says, hey, they're really complicated. You should just use a gap buffer. And so I was like, well, I want to use the good data structure. Let's try it out. And so this kind of goes through kind of what I went through and maybe helps you understand what ropes are and should you use them or not. So the TLDR on a rope is that it's a string data structure and it promises login performance. It's really specialized for editing, like inserting, deleting, things like that. Uh, it's a specialized binary balance search tree and it's typically used for text editors, right? It's just big, big text manipulation. A lot of editors use it and I really wanted to know why and I believe in general it's because they want to build support. I want to load a hundred megabyte file, right? And you don't want you don't want your editor to be trashed because oh this one can't load it, right? And Notepad plus plus can and maybe uh what is it WordPad? I don't know if it can today or not, but you know, so basically saying oh this editor is better because it could. So that's I think a lot of why this thing actually exists. So what I'll go over is in general what the big O performance of a rope is versus some of the other data structures, when you might want to use it, some examples of timings and how to actually evaluate is this worthwhile, some rules for implementing it, uh, go over tree rotations a little bit, things I did right and wrong, and then some of the performance of my code, and then we'll kind of quickly go through kind of abbreviated, I've tried to delete out a lot of the code just so you kind of see how it works. So as far as performance goes, you know, we've got ropes, what we're looking at today. Then there's gap buffers, which again, I actually do agree. I think this is the better choice. There's also piece tables and just naive arrays. Right? And the thing you wanna pay attention to is the naive array is just ON across the board. So that's, that's really not good. Uh, don't do a naive array. The gap buffer more or less ends up 01 in many of, in many of the editor fields, right? So in the insert, delete, append, things like that, you're gonna be a one. The uh, the rope is log in, and a piece table also ends up more or less a one. The, the the asterisk here is that the uh, the way gap buffer works is there's a hole you write into the hole. When the hole is filled up, it actually does reallocate and move the whole array, just like you know, like a basically almost like a dynamic list. So that has to get amortized over the edits and you know there's cost there so moving on to algorithm selection uh, gap buffers are super easy to implement like you can go from not even understanding them at all to having one up and running in just a few hours uh, multi buffers might be a little bit of an issue because if you have different gaps that need to be in the same file that could get tricky so it, there's more logic to do if you wanted to support multiple buffers in the same file and then it's limiting factors really just the speed of mem copy because that's that's really they use and abuse mem copy uh, ropes on the other hand are super complicated I, i've got 50 hours invested in mine and i probably need a good 30 hours more to make it decent usable i mean it, it works right now but i wouldn't call it good by any measure there's a minimum overhead for all data sizes, whether it's one character or one megabyte, right? There's the, gonna be at least a leaf node and a branch. And so you, you've got this overhead. Now, one of the things that you can do and I've seen mentioned in other editors is they'll combine data structures. So they'll use a rope to hold big swaths of data and they'll use gap buffers. And this way you can end up with multiple buffers, for example, in the same file. So you're solving the problem of the gap buffer and you're making it where the ropes overhead is not quite as heavy as it normally would be. And so, you know, in summary, a rope is really good for big data. It's not great for like a two kilobyte, you know, code file. So here's some timing estimates and I try to do this two ways. So, so we're gonna take a megabyte and I wanted to look at it if you're non-cache, right? So this is gonna be the favorable scenario for the rope, right? This is not in memory, so it's gotta go fetch it out, or sorry, it's gotta fetch it out in main memory. And so mem copy moves at like one and a half gigs a second. And for, for our demo, demo sample of one meg, right, you're gonna move 66 microseconds per megabyte. So the gap buffer moves 
of the data for some random insert, you know, just somewhere, right? And that's maybe a little bit not generous, but it gives you at least a number. In a sequential insert, once the gap has been moved, you can keep doing sequential inserts at zero cost. Uh, but moving the gap to that position, there's a cost there. And so on an insert, when you're not in position or in the gap, right, it's going to be for, let's say we move half the file or half the, half the buffer. So it's like 30, 30 microseconds. Um, again, sequential edits are no cost at all. Delete is just 01. You're just actually just moving where the gap pointers are. So super quick. So allocating 4K like pages, if you will. We're assuming that there's a tree operation overhead and if on insert and delete, and I just picked five microseconds, uh, later in the presentation I'll get into it, but I think it's actually probably closer to two and a half. And so, you know, you got your overhead costs, again, two and a half, five, pick your number. And, but, but it's a really small allocation, right? And so it's like four, uh, four kilobytes. And so that's like five, you know, it's basically like a quarter microsecond for the memory portion and then the tree overhead. So your deletions are log in. That's pretty much our constant for tree operations. And there's the note again that you could put a small gap buffer to help get the benefits of both, right? At the cost of additional complexity. So then this is the more generous estimate. Like basically you've got your file is in cache. And so now memcopy is gonna move data say 25 meg, gig, sorry, gigs a second, you know, that's four microseconds per meg. So again, we move half of our data on a random insert and that gives us like two microseconds for a random, again, nothing for sequential. Our rope still has the same situation. So we're still just five microseconds or, or, or two and a half, whichever, right? And so, so my overhead range between one and six microseconds. I did see one scenario at 12. Rules for ropes, if you want to maintain your log performance, you need to make sure that the tree is balanced. And for example, if your rope was all left nodes, right, so that's basically just a linked list, that's going to be linear through a linked list, and that's, you know, not going to be log performance. The branches contain the full weight of the left subtree, and left children should not be, must not be nil, rather. And then leaves only contain the slice into a string. So, Right here, I've got ropes, right? And that's five characters. So that's why this branch has a five character left subtree. Down here, I've got three for R, and then also there's the not, right? So, but notice up here, this is the full left subtree. So this, this branch is taking the aggregate of all of these guys. And then same thing down here, easy is four, and that's this guy. So the, the data structures for the rope are essentially, I just have a wrapper on the rope, which is just the head, and it just gives me something that's saying, like, here's a rope. And then a node has a parent pointer, and either it's a leaf or a branch. And it's just, I've just got those union together, uh, tagged union. A leaf is just an alias to a string. And then a branch has the weight of his left tree and his left and right children. Tree rotations. So in this scenario, I've got A, B, and C are all the, uh, the leaf children. And then I want to do either a left rotation or a right rotation. So P and N are my, my branches. And so I'm gonna move, for, for example, the right rotation. P wants to move up, N wants to move down, right? And that's gonna move the tree by one to the right. And that you can see the product of that rotation on the right side and then vice versa if I wanna go back the other way. Things I learned when doing the rope data structure, the it, it seems kind of simple at first, but really you've got to understand trees really well beforehand. I hadn't really worked with trees that much. I mean, like traversal and things like that, but I not dealt with them in the sense of like balancing and mutable keys. And so the key here is that mutable keys are kind of game changing and that things are much more unstable and your search becomes more difficult. So go implement an AVL tree first, and it's it's a lot easier after that because you have kind of a basis to work from. Another thing that I would definitely do doing it again is I would use paper, like literally a pen and paper. I draw out the tree as in step by step. I would say I start with ropes, right? And I say ropes are, and I put a tree, or I guess it's my left foot. I put ropes are, and I say ropes are easy, right? And that means this guy goes over here, and then I say ropes are not easy. And I start drawing this tree, and I do the insertions, I do the deletions. And, and 
I mean, I spent maybe an hour or two drawing out little pages worth of diagrams, but it helped me understand how this thing should behave. I could go through and carefully check all my weights and make sure that I understood on paper the actual output. After that, I think I was like 30 or 40 hours in before I built a printing helper. You know, once you build this thing, trying to understand what the shape of a tree is in the debugger is a hopeless endeavor, I would almost say. And so I, I made a little in-order print, right? And that I could then go print the tree and then look at it and say, does this compare to my paper example or is it messed up, right? And that became a lot easier to inspect the product of the tree. Um, the other thing is the asserts. So as you're working through this, and it's, it's really not recursive asserts, it's just asserts, but there need to be asserts throughout your code, um, particularly like one of the, one of the nasty bugs I ran into multiple times before I put those in was sometimes I would miss correctly or incorrectly set the parent. And a lot of this had to do with tree rotations. Tree rotations were a little bit tricky. I'd set the parent wrong and then you could end up in a cycle. And you know, that was quite difficult. And another one is during the various operations, you're going to invalidate the weights. And in this case, the weights are our keys for the tree. If the weights are wrong, your ability to process the tree just dies. And so having, for debug purposes, having the assertions in there to make sure that your nodes are always at the correct weights. You know what? It really was a recursive. So, so why I say recursive here is I would, after doing an operation, I would actually traverse the whole tree and make those assertions, right? And this is like, while I'm developing the rope, um, definitely would want to turn that off, you know, when you're running it for real. But, but this allows me to make sure that anytime I do an operation, I don't accidentally corrupt the tree. Profiling, you know, this is kind of my little simple code, right? And it's like, go insert some text, you know, at the end, insert it again at the end, insert it again at the end and again, right? So that's that first block. Then I want to insert some text in the middle. Then I want to go delete a bunch of stuff. And then I go put it back together, right? So this is, I've take, put, put together a tree, I've taken it apart and I put it back together. It's not the biggest sample. And so like, there's gonna be variability, but because the login performance in theory, things should be okay. So here's where we are. Um, again, our tree operations are probably around five microseconds. However, you know, when I built the presentation, I hadn't really given much thought to the fact that in the act of taking a profile measurement, there's a, almost like the Heisenberg, Heisenberg? The uncertainty principle, pretty sure. Um, because I'm doing all these detailed measurements and you can see there's lots of measurements happening during the recursion. Every one of those is like 12 nanoseconds, right? And so if you take hundreds of measurements, then your time just drags out, right? And so it'd probably be wise to come back and do just like, I'm gonna do a split operation and I'm gonna take an RDC, RDTSC timing before and after, right? And then do the Delta. That's gonna be a much, much more accurate and not corrupted measurement. But this at least gives you an idea of both, you know, general performance and kind of how it flows. And so, you know, we're seeing you know, we insert on 3.9 microseconds and, and this by the way was not set up on like, like an arena allocator right i'm just doing a just general alloc and so that's going to be some cost there i definitely would move it onto an arena if i was going to do this you know for real some of my prior implementations and and this just gives you kind of a measurement of, of where i got to right so we ended up at least profiled you know 38 microseconds or so started out trying to avoid using parent pointers and so i would find my way down to the bottom of the tree and i would need to backtrack to do like a split operation and so as i was working my way to the bottom i would just take and made a dynamic array and just kept sticking the path i was taking down there and i'd use that to travel back upwards and you know i mean i i don't i don't know for sure that that was a bad design um there were bugs and inefficiencies that I ended up abandoning that approach and just started using parent pointers instead. Uh, I, I will say the parent pointers, once you get them sorted, are much more like they mentally make a lot more sense. This this got really convoluted. Actually, no, I take that back. 
this was not a good design because the split and traversal operations became convoluted. Whereas with the parent pointers, while it is tricky to get them correct, the uh, traversals were reasonably straightforward. The, so the next design I took was basically get rid of the trace, put some parent pointers in, um, and would do a bottom up again. And that, like you do need to do some bottom up ops, but this was just a bad design. Like this, and I had, you can see right here, there's like a clean rope, right? So, so what was happening is I'd end up with a bunch of tree nodes that had nil fields. And sometimes like a left child would end up nil and that's like violating the rules of the tree. So this was very, very prone to getting basically a corrupted tree. So that got thrown away in favor of, of this one that I did here. So attempt number three, much cleaner, you know, twice the performance. Some of that is probably, you know, I was just getting better at what I was doing with it rather than the design, but you know, we doubled. So I kind of wanted to go through the code briefly. Now I went and deleted a lot of things out of the code. And my goal was just to show you the idea of what's happening, not necessarily all the details. There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of checks you got to do to maintain parent height, parent pointer hygiene and um, things like that. And making sure that we're checking, like if you're deleting a child, maybe, maybe it was like there's only a left. So we wouldn't actually just absorb, absorb the whole thing and move that left child up to where that branch is. So there's a bunch of logic for that to, and this is again, like tree hygiene. Um, I'm trying to delete all that out because that's not, I mean, it is relevant to implementing this, but it's not relevant to understanding the principle of it. Um, the other thing is that my design is currently destructive. I, you know, it would need modified to be a non-destructive design. And that is one thing that is nice is you can make a non-destructive rope. And lastly, you know, it's functional. I wouldn't call this a production or a library grade code. So we start with insert and an insert is, uh, the first operation is to split it. So wherever, you know, if my string is this long and I want to put something in the middle, I split it where that, that position is at the cursor. I then tack on my new text to the right of the left node. And then I concat the left and the right nodes back together. And then lastly, we do rebalance the tree. When you want to delete, I'm going to split the rope on the left, right? So, so if I'm deleting, if I've got a string this long and I want to delete the middle chunk, I'm going to take the left and I'm going to take the right. I'll take everything in the middle and throw it away. And then I take the left rope, the right rope and stick them together. And so that's exactly what's happening here. This gives me the middle tree, right? So this is like now I have a left tree and a middle tree. And then this gives me the right trees and I have left, right, middle. I then want to concatenate the left and the right. I delete the middle. Right, then rebalance again. Uh, concatenation is really simple. I just create a new branch and I stick the left and right children on. So that's, you know, probably the most trivial of the operations. Split is by far the most complicated of the operations. And so uh, in, in this case, it's going to be, we're just going to loop through the note, through the tree till I get to the leaves and I break. So we'll skip over the kind of trivial cases, but essentially if I'm in a branch, I want to decide, do I need to go left or right? If I'm going left, I'm gonna say I'm, I'm moving to the left, so I'm gonna set that as my next uh, next node to work on. I'll then take and stick the right tree, right? So if I went left, I have to take the right and go throw them on the right tree, because I'm splitting there. So I'm splitting as I work my way down the tree towards the leaf. I make sure to update the children and the weights of the tree. And then when we finally get to the leaf, it's kind of the same, right? So, so this, Again, this is omitting a lot of the checks we're doing for health, but it generally shows the idea that start at the top and as you go down the tree, you slice, slice that tree and move it over. This, this was, this was, again, this was the hardest pro procedure in the entire project, just this right here. And yeah, uh, rebalancing. So you know, we want to get the height. I picked one, right? And that's pretty stringent. So, so basically I can be one off on left, right trees. You probably could get it with two or three, right? I mean, it shouldn't be too bad. We don't want to be 20 off, but a few is fine. You know, every level you're off is a divide by two that you're not getting, right? And so we're, we're losing some measure of the log, but you know, maybe 
one level, two levels of that's okay. Uh, there is kind of an edge case where if your uh, child needs rebalanced, then you actually should rebalance them before you rebalance yourself. And part of that's because um, the P and the N, right, they actually can swap. And so if you don't balance the child first, assuming it needs balance, then you're balancing the wrong thing and you can put things out of, in worse balance than you started with. So a little bit of an edge there. And that's really it. So that's the project. Uh, should you use a rope? Probably not. I would stick to a get buffer, really. And, you know, the thing that's nice is if you at least have like a, a text buffer as kind of the, the wrapping type over it all, under the hood, you could move off a buffer into a rope if, let's say, you want to run gigabyte files and be able to edit them quickly. So it's not like it's something that's an irreversible decision. That's a, like double down why you don't want to necessarily do a rope out of the gate. It, unless your use case is for very large text files that people are going to open, right? So that's the presentation.